Okay, Proverbs chapter 1. I'll read this sometime. When I'm at the farmer's market, I hear somebody, that's not what Jesus would do. You're turning people away. Because we're going to pick up Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20 to 33, close out the chapter. We're going to pick up the street preacher. Street preacher. And yes, in case you didn't know and read and study your Bible, Jesus preached on the street. He preached in the, the villages, the synagogue. Paul did it. Peter, James, and John. The great awake, the, the, the two great awakenings, not the rest of them, the two great awakenings. Whitfield went through Connecticut and he would go into the mills, because there were mills in Connecticut. He would go up to the foreman and say, hey, at lunchtime. When they're having their lunch, would it be okay for them to meet where you guys have their lunch and preach the gospel? And they would give them permission. So the men would get off and get lunch at the mills in, in Connecticut, and he'd get up there and he'd preach to them during lunchtime. He'd go through Massachusetts. If he'd be going down the road, he'd be seeing people out in the fields or doing something. He'd see a big rock. He'd get standing up on top of that rock, and while they were working the fields or doing what they were doing, he'd preach to them the gospel. Benjamin Franklin has been recorded to say, I got the Benjamin Franklin part right now, I can't get the name of the preacher. I, I remember the one name now and I can't remember the other name. There was a street preacher that preached and Benjamin Franklin has recorded his voice four or five blocks away. The Salvation Army would have street preaching. Street preaching, Christian, is in our Baptist history. Street preaching is long before your church building showed up. Do you think, oh, I received Jesus Christ as my Savior. Boom! Church building. No. Where do you think Paul was on Mars Hill? A Baptist church. Yeah, you're pulling. Where do you think John the Baptist was? You think there was a Baptist church building at the Jordan River? No. So what we're going to look at in Proverbs chapter 1, verse 20, is street preaching. It's in the Bible. And street preacher that I am in all the years I've done it, there are times I will bring forth Proverbs chapter 1 and I will read it out loud. Here I go. Wisdom is how to apply what you... I know some of the Bible. The wisdom I have is how to put some of the Bible I know to application. I know when I'm dealing with in the street, I know I'm primarily dealing with lost people. So I'm going to preach the gospel. There may be some saved people. I'm going to throw a couple into about, you know, growing as a Christian, but the Bible says many go to Broadway and leads to destruction, so many of my messages street preaching is the gospel to the lost. See, I know the scriptures, I apply the wisdom of the scriptures to get the right audience. That's like with gospel tracts too, and I, I had to teach my son, you know, he just hand out gospel, which is great, hand out gospel tracts, but Every gospel track has its specific purpose. And he would hand out Catholic tracts. I'm like, Henry, what, what if they were not Catholic? I'm getting gospel tracts out. That's not wisdom. Wisdom crieth without. She utters her voice in the streets. And Isaiah said, Isaiah said, I got this in my Bible. Lift up thy voice like a trumpet. Show my people, I believe it is, their transgression. Lift up your voice like a trumpet. Cry aloud! You know, number one day, they want me to shut up, keep it down, get you loud. My voice carries over there. She utters her voice in the street. So she's talking in the street, she's preaching in the street. Wisdom is a street preacher. Now, let me, let me. Let me officiate myself here. 
There are good street preachers and there are sad street preachers. Once they go out and preach the gospel and get lost people say that deal with them. I'm not talking about the listen, I'm not talking about the preachers. A girl walks down with, with uh, you know, a very very mini skirt or having a, a, a can of beer or or attacking you know the sodomites by their sin at the sodomite parade or or you know you know bashing the cat. That, that's not right. As street preachers, we're to go out with the gospel, and, and if we're dealing with a Catholic group, we show them the Catholic of the Bible, the truth of the Bible, not, you know, bashing them. Because a lot of Catholics don't know. And we show them what the Bible says. We don't, I don't bash a person because they got a beer. I mean, if I'm preaching on, on the street, I will deal with primary three sins that we all do. How did you honor your mother and father? Have you ever told a lie? Have you ever taken anything? And you've not put God first. I don't get into adultery. I don't get into fornication. I don't get. I don't need to get in that. We've all mistreated our parents. We've all taken something. We have all lied about something, and we all disrespected God. We don't need to be hammering people that we don't know. That's that's foolish. She wisdom. Now look at Solomon. He's liking wisdom to a woman. Oh, oh women should preach. I know some women that go out and street preach. Is it right or wrong? That's debatable. I mean, she's not a pastor, she's not somebody in authority. She's getting the gospel out. But is not the church not called the bride of Jesus Christ? Is not the church called a woman? Is she not to be wise? And there's no church that says 1000 B.C. There was no church in 1000 B.C. There weren't street preachers in the time of, of Solomon. Later on, there'd be prophets coming. Jeremiah would be crying out in the street. Isaiah cried out in the street. Noah, from what we can assume, cried out from the ark or from his building site. Elijah. He's at Mount Carmel and he's preaching to the prophets of Baal. Don't say, oh, you're driving people away. It's not what Jesus would do. She crieth in the chief place of concourse. That concourse is a busy, crowded events area. Now, we are at the farmer's market because there's business and there's people coming and going. You may have a state fair. You may have your own farmer's market. You may have a flea market. You may have where they, they go and have a car show, or they, they have oil painting. We've done that one time. Or we have, I don't know, COVID-19, we couldn't do the Coca-Cola corner, but we got the major two races down here in Daytona Beach, Daytona 500 and the Coke, Coke 400. Well, guess where we are as a family? We're out there on international, and we're preaching and getting gospel tracts and gospel signs on the street. Because why? There's tons of race fans. And I got a pastor mad at me because I wasn't there for his sermon, but we were out there getting what Proverbs chapter 1. Listen, I could skip a, a sermon, one sermon, or maybe two if it's a busy day. I can skip one or two sermons and go out and reach hundreds, if not thousands, of people with the gospel and reach thousands more with my big, fat, loud voice. And even more, when we put the signs along the street, as they're going through the street and they got to slow down, they got to stop because, because they're directing traffic and it's back-to-back -back cars and they're sitting there and they have to read Jesus' day. They'll have to read the gospel sign. That's what's going on here. But let me give you one advice too. Make sure it's legal. 
Number one, if you want to go in to start in any public ministry, even door knocking, go to your local police or sheriff's department and say, listen, I'd like to talk to somebody kind of in charge. I mean, don't get the big chief down. Usually a shift supervisor. Say, I'd just like to talk to say, hi, my name is Stiley Haber, and whoever's with you, bring a witness. Write names down. I didn't do that. And say, listen, we're going to be at such and such place, such and such time, and we're going to do such and such thing. Here's an example of the gospel tract we're going to give out. I plan on preaching. Not Explain it to us. Christian Law Association <coughs> can give you good help. There's gospel advocates in Deland, Florida. If you contact him, he can give you some help. Make sure where you're going to be is not public property. I mean, excuse me, take that back. I did not say that. Make sure where you're going to be is not private property, but it is public property. Like for us, the city sidewalk is ours. And we're legal by the lawyers, by the city, by the police department, who backed us up. Unhappy to the farmer's market, but that sidewalk is ours. Now we can go in the park. We can't go in the parking lot. The parking lot is a public parking lot, but since the city rents it out, obey the laws, obey the powers that be, we can still be in the sidewalk. Make sure what you do is according to the law. Now, if you're going to go door knocking, I'm trying to get this all in a nutshell. If you walk up to a complex and it says no trespassing, no solicitation, don't do it. Okay? Smart. Use your brain. I was I was arrested at a comp at an apartment complex. Well, what are you arrested for? It's trespassing. Why were you arrested for trespassing? Well, the sign says no trespass. You need to go back to kindergarten, first grade, second grade, third grade, fourth grade, fifth grade to learn how to read what no means. But you gotta win. Send them a gospel, write down the addresses and send them a gospel track in the mail. Lisa and I did that many years. And the openings of the gates, and the gates would be into the city. You know, each, they were walled cities, and the only way to get into that city was through the gates. And the gates of those cities was the city hall. All business was done at the gates. So, I know we got the gates. I mean, we got the wall in between America and Mexico. Well, I hope that wall they built between Mexico and America, where there are openings for cars and traffic, I hope there is Bible-believing Christians there with signs, passing out gospel tracts, and preaching. I guarantee that there is a wall or gate where San Diego, because from San Diego, you can go right into Tijuana. I didn't, but I had friends who did. I hope there's somebody at that gate at least once a week for Jesus Christ. That's according to Proverbs chapter 1, verse 21. I know for sure, and I've been told, I don't know personally, but I've been told, that that entrance from San Diego to, and maybe another area, I know San Diego. I was there. San Diego to Tijuana, it's busy. Okay, 95. Man, stand the state border. Between Florida and Georgia, if you live in that area. In the openings of the gates. I mean, I've got so many stories. We did a whole complete high school, four years. We were outside where all the buses parked, and it had to be. 20, maybe 50 buses, if not more. We're right there where all the students, even the ones that didn't take the buses, had to walk by us. That was a concourse play. That was business. Couldn't miss us. Couldn't miss my boy. When we're downtown in, in Norwich, we sat right there in the traffic aisle and traffic's coming to us and they hit the red light both ways. They would sit there and read the gospel song. And they were walking across the street, my son would get you with gospel track. In 
in the city she utters her word. So she's also preaching in the city. Inside the city she's preaching. She's preaching the gates. She's preaching where all the business is. You're driving business away. You're going to hear that. Now, I'll tell you, quite frankly, it's not true. Personally with me, and I don't know with other ministries, personally with me, I have seen our side filled with people, and I've seen their side, the devil's side with the music. I've seen it dead empty. And I've seen as soon as I open up my mouth and preach, there are people who come on our side. So don't listen to their foolishness. They don't know what they're talking about. So, how long, we're going to look at three people here. Ye simple ones will have, love simplicity. Uh, he could be wrong. He's got his religion, i got mine. He doesn't know what he's talking about. I don't believe the Bible. The Bible is written by men. I'm good. I don't need to listen. I can do whatever I want to do. I can believe whatever I want to believe. Yeah, and they're just people. We, we have three groups of people that we deal with. Number one group is a simple group. They just walk on by. They don't even care. It's bad that they don't care. Here's a man screaming and howling, howling on a PA system. Get my carrots and go home. I don't know where that guy is. Number two. Are people who get ferocious and angry. We'll deal with them in a minute. And then number three, there are people that like it. That's the three groups. You either hate God in the Bible or you love the God in the Bible. You just don't care. The ones I don't care, that's the simple. I'm ready for this one. And the scorners delight. And they're scorning. You will have people that call you every name under the sun and under the planet Earth and under the, the solar system. They will tell you everything and everything. They will yell at you. They will get in your face. They will. I've had a woman come up to me one time. She pulled the wires out of my unit. I've never been punched. We had one time when we first started the ministry, they were throwing radishes at us. I've heard stories of that. Old rotten food and stuff like that. But the scorner is, I hate you. I hate you, Jesus. I hate your Bible. I'm going to let you know I hate it. And I want you to shut up. And to make you shut up, we're going to pay a DJ, or we're going to blast the music, or we're going to do something so we don't have to hear you. That's scorner. There's a woman there at the farmer's market. I'm speaking about what I know. Now, you may have other things. There's a woman at the farmer's market. She's the caretaker. And as soon as she sees us up, she gets that stereo, plugs it in, and starts flat. That's scorning. She's not simple. She knows exactly what she's doing. And she's doing it to try to prevent the preaching of the gospel. That's scorning. And then number three... And fools hate knowledge. Knowledge. Look at chapter 1, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom instruction. Instruction. So you're there, you're preaching the gospel, you're, you're showing somebody the gospel, you're opening the Bible, you got whatever you're doing, you're presenting the gospel. And they reject it. The Bible says they're a fool. See that? They don't want the knowledge. They don't fear God. They, they, they despise the wisdom of knowing Jesus. And they despise the wisdom of how to be saved. Those are the majority of people you're going to get. And no matter what biblical sound public ministry you, you're going to get into. Remember Many go the broad way, few go through the gate that leads to life. Remember that. Don't believe that you're going to go out there and everybody's going to get saved. Don't believe everybody loves Jesus. You'll find out they don't. It's 
Turn you. That's repent. Turn you. Repent. Stop what you're doing. Reverse. And get right. And don't go to hell. At my reproof. Reproof is to blame to the face. To expose. You're a sinner. Sinners go to hell. Unless the Lamb of God. Cleanses you of your sins. Unless you have believed in the Lord Jesus Christ and got saved. Behold, I will pour my spirit, that's the Holy Spirit, unto you, and I will make known my words unto you. That's wisdom. Do you know verse 20 to 23 is also the Holy Spirit? Described as a female, though he's male. It's the Holy Spirit that leads a lost man to Christ. It's also the Holy Spirit that's inside the believer when Jesus said, Go into all the world and preach the gospel. It's not me preaching. It's not you teaching. It's what the Holy Spirit in us does the work. Don't ever think it's you. You'd be a fool to think it's you. It's the Holy Spirit. And there'll be a time in the public ministry that the Holy Spirit will do a work in their heart. We're going to look at the attitudes in a moment. So we've seen what we're to do. We've seen the audience. we got one more person in the audience, but that comes later. We see the work of the Holy Spirit. The Spirit make known the work. Excuse <coughs> me. The words unto you. You better make sure whenever public ministry you are, you've got the words of the Bible. You've got the words of God. Don't go with any of those junky, blabbermouth words. Every idle word shall a man give account thereof, Jesus said. Oh, you got such lovely roses out here. That's idle words. I'm here to tell you about the gospel of the Lord Jesus Christ. I'm not here to tell you about my church. I'm not here to tell a great I am. I'm here to tell you about Jesus. If you were to die today, do you know where you would go when you die? I've, I've gone to I've gone up to the doors. I've done door knock. Go up to oh, you know that's a great boat you have. You know, well, let me tell you why we're here. We're here. Because we want to tell people about you. Well, you know what? I gotta go. It's it's getting late. I'm sorry to bug you. Okay, well, you know, we'll leave. We give you, no, no, that's okay. We don't want anything. Personally, me, personally, fine. You talk about their boat, their car, their wonderful gardens and stuff like that. When it comes time to the gospel, they don't want to, if they don't want to hear it, they're not going to hear it. You'll be gone. I mean, I've only witnessed that in Ledger, Connecticut, in Norwich, Connecticut. I think New London, Connecticut, some places. And then Falkertop, Connecticut. You may have got different results, but that's what I found. Because I have called That's the Holy Spirit. Those people you you're reaching out there, the Holy Spirit has called them. You wonder something like, again, for us, I'm going to speak what I know. Why am I coming to this farmer's market to get cucumbers? I didn't go to Walmart. Because the Holy Spirit wants you to hear, there to hear the gospel and get a gospel track. There are many people we know and we see. We see them every week. Those one that hates us. And then there are people we never saw ever in our life and we'll never see them again. They heard the gospel preach, and they may have gotten a gospel track, and the Holy Spirit said, I want you to have that. You're there for that reason. Because I have called ye refuse. Ye 
You're not going to have a public ministry and everybody's going to love you. Everybody's going to get saved. And things are going to be just so great and wonderful. If you are having that kind of ministry, you are fouled. You are of the devil. It is not of God. And it's not of the Bible. Marvel not, my brethren. The world hates you. Jesus said, no, the world hated me first. You know, if you are in the ministry and people love you more than they hate you, you need to examine your ministry because it's not biblical at all. Whoa. Yeah, I said it. Let me say it again or let me have you get off your heart attack. We'll move on. I mean, I hate to have you get all worked up and all. If, they, if you got more people that love you in the ministry than hate you, you've got something wrong. I'm not trying not to offend them. Jesus offended them. Paul offended Paul. Paul got the church offended. Have I, have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Hey, Paul, we loved your message so much. Oh, I'm glad. Everyone, pick up rocks. Let's kill them. Read the Bible. Oh, Jesus, so wonderful, so great. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. What do you guys want me to do with Jesus? Crucify him! Crucify him! What about Bar Bar Barnabas? I mean, Barabbas, the, the thief, the murderer. The... Right, we'll take him home. Some people don't like the Bible. Because I have called and you refused. I have stretched out my hand. Who's doing the calling? I mean, look at it physically. Whatever public ministry you are in or going to get, who's doing the real calling? Physically. You. Who's reaching out with their hand? You are. But who's doing it? The Holy Spirit in you. So when that guy calls you to flippity flat, flippity flat, that don't sound right, you can't say ever again. And go back to church and they say, well, Pastor, you won't believe what this guy said to me, but I ain't going to tell you because I can't say that. Don't take it personal. Because even Jesus Christ said, Paul, why persecute thou me? When they scorn you, when they hate you, and they want you gone, they want you dead, they want you arrested, they want you removed, they want God, Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit gone. Because we're looking at the Holy Spirit here. The Holy Spirit is calling, the Holy Spirit is reaching out, and he's using the Christian. Did you get that? But ye, oh wait, no man regard it. They don't care. And there's going to be many people don't regard, don't care. And it's sad. And your heart will break. Now to refuse, verse 24, that's the scorner. The scorner was just, I don't want to hear it. Get out of here. Shut up. Take your Jesus somewhere else. No regard is the simple. What are you doing? I'll have a couple of tomatoes and some. I said I'll have some more tomato. That guy's over there yelling. And some of those potatoes. How much are you eat? Three dollars? You got change for? What's that guy? Shut up. You know, I've seen him. And he just walked on right by you. And. My daughter tries to get gospel time, and I watch it. Just watch, like, like my daughter is it's thin air, invisible. And she'll say, "You can I give you something about Jesus, or can I present you?" And they're like, they just walk by, like, that's the simple. I mean, yeah, that's the simple. But ye have set at naught. Nothing. That's the fool. You have said not all my counsel. What's the counsel? 
everything you're preaching and teaching out of the Bible. Of the Holy Spirit using you in the Scripture. Listen, I have had many times. I can honestly say street preaching and preaching and teaching from the pulpits. You know, open up your mouth and the Holy Spirit will fill. That's not true. I've had the Holy Spirit do it many times. I've had one thing, prison ministries and other places. I've gone in there, hey, I got this great outline, and I've gone, I've gone, wow, that was a bunny trail. I left my notes. And at the end of at the end of the, of the study, I'll get a man or a couple of people come up and say, "Wow, I needed that man. You spoke right to me." Now it's not like I'm going into it completely, you know, no work, no preparation. But the Holy Spirit will use you with His words, and if you study the Scriptures and you memorize Scriptures, you'll come a time in your life you're like, "Wow, I I forgot I knew that." And with none of my counsel, and that's wisdom, that's the Holy Spirit. It's my counsel. It's my hand. It is my words. My reproof. And you have refused. You have had no regard. You, you taught it as nothing. And I take that personally, the Holy Spirit said. And I just... The, the preacher, the Christian, he's just a battering ram. And he'll get rewards for his faithfulness. Now, sorry state, verse 26, I will, this is, this is wisdom. This is the Holy Spirit. I also will laugh at your calamity, misery. Can a man go so far where God would not save him? What did God tell Jeremiah? Don't even pray for him. I won't hear it. I've had enough. Uh, so much progress. So we went to the room, there was two men, one in the cage, and one in the stuck in bed. So we're like, can't you repent? I, I, I've gone too far, and the Holy Spirit can't work on me no more. You can get so cold and refuse God so many times, God's like, I'm done. And then you get your clammies, you get your troubles. <laughs> oh, you listen to that guy call out to me now. Oh, he's calling out. You want to play back what he what he kept telling the preacher? You want to have all the laughing and joking he did about the guy talking to him with the, with the Bible? You want to count how many times he used my son's name in vain? And now you're calling me? <laughs> you know, when it records the Bible that God laughs, I think there's a place in Psalms, and, and Psalms that I'm not going to go It's not a good laugh. A holy and righteous God looking at a sinner who's condemned, gone too far. <laughs> I don't even know how to describe that God. Now some people, wow, you've gone too far. I will mock when your fear comes. I got misery. I got troubles. Yeah, Jesus is phony. The Bible is just written by men. I don't need that man. I don't need that Bible. I don't need that preacher. I wish you'd go away. Oh, God, please help me. I wish you'd go away. Imagine a guy who's lost gets to the point that God says Galatians 6, 7. God, I need your help. Get lost. Turn up the band in, in heaven so I can hear more praises from me. I don't want to hear him. Well, that's not the God in your average Baptist church today. We have a holy and righteous God and he gets angry. Look what John the Baptist said. He that has the Son has everlasting life. Amen. Glory to God. 
he that has not the Son shall not see light, but the wrath of God. What is that wrath? It's hell, the lake of fire. When your fear cometh as desolation, wait and ruin. When your anxieties, we just had two tornadoes come to the Gulf and hit Louisiana and Texas area. And there may be, may be people there, oh God, this lost everything. You wouldn't listen to me. You didn't listen to me with Katrina. Whoa. You didn't repent at Katrina. You sure didn't repent the COVID-19. Something's more important than Jesus. Taking my son's name in vain. This is a holy, righteous God, true God that I'm preaching. And this is not in your typical Sunday morning pulpit. My God is holy, but he's righteous. And he hates sin. And the sinner. When distress and anguish comes upon you, anxiety, then shall they call upon me. I will not answer. Be not deceived, God's not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall alter it. Do you see the man calling unto God there? And God says, nope. Well, look at verse 24. The Holy Spirit says, Because I have called you and you refused. Explain to me, Pilate and, and Felix. Felix said, Almost persuaded me to be Christian. They call upon God, God's not listening. And when the Holy Spirit called upon them, get out of here. Oh, no, no, no. There is a time for some people, not all, that God may get so aggravated, I, I'm done with you. And Jeremiah proved it because God told Jeremiah as far as Judah, don't. And you know Jeremiah was praying. It's like, don't. Stop the prayer. I ain't listening. And there may, there have been, there will be, and there will be some to come before the Lord comes. There will be, there will be people that God said, hey, "I'm done." You had many chances. Now, I know that's not your typical Baptist doctrine or teaching, but the Bible's not your typical Baptist teaching. There's no Baptist church in the Bible. They shall seek me early, but they shall not find me. That's the Holy Spirit speaking out. For they have hated knowledge, okay? Go back to chapter 1, verse 7. For the fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and truth. You didn't want to fear God. That's knowledge. You don't want the knowledge? You can't get to know God without knowing God. you got to believe He is. Oh, I want all the blessings and I want all that God has to offer, but we came from Ames. That's not Bible. I, I want all the blessings. I want gold, riches, and silver and all that. And I said a prayer. That's not Bible. It's a fairy tale. Started with once upon a time. My Bible says, in the beginning, God. For they have hated knowledge and did not choose to fear the Lord. Again, that is verse 7. That is free will, verse 29. That defiles Calvin. 
did not choose to fear the Lord. It did not say God chose them not to fear the Lord. They did not choose to fear the Lord. So Calvin could go take a flying leap out of the highest building of his time and fall flat on the street and get run over by horses and carts and all that because Calvinism is dead. The person that is rejected by God because they rejected God of their own free will. God didn't want them to go to hell because that's why he sent the preacher. That's why he sent the gospel tract. That's why he sent the Bible. They would none of my counsel. Verse 25, but I set at naught all my counsel. Death, burial, and resurrection, quotas, eh, we don't want that. Okay, now when you want counsel, I'll tell you one thing definitely for sure, for sure, 100%. Verse 26 to 32, I know 100% assurity is that a man, the great white throne judgment, is Jesus Christ, and they're about to cast him in the lake of fire. Come on, Lord, wasn't I good? Depart from me, you workers of iniquity, I never knew you. But then I did. Depart from me, workers of iniquity, I never knew But Lord, please, no. Listen, I brought the street preacher, I brought all the gospel tracts, I brought that, that pastor to that church, I brought everybody to testify against you, you heard it all. My Lord, please, I don't want to go. Okay, angels, cast him. Jesus is Lord. <laughs> and it may happen to a human being before they die. And they despise my reproof. And that was verse number 23. You see everything the Holy Spirit has given them to a Christian that's supposed to preach the gospel? You see everything the Holy Spirit has given them, they reject it. Like, okay, fine. You're not going to get it. Therefore shall they eat of the fruit of their own way. That's Galatians 6-7 in the Old Testament. You plant tomato seeds, you're going to eat tomatoes. You plant the seeds of rejecting God, and you're going to live in heaven with everybody. Nope. Not everybody goes to heaven. And be filled with his own devices. You want to see a man in the Bible that did that? Go read the study of Haman in the book of Esther. And we'll come across Haman a lot of times in Proverbs. And Solomon, not even me, Esther, never mind Haman. For the churning of the way to simple, all right, shall slay them. The turn, uh, they don't care. And they'll be slain, they'll die. They'll die in their sins. And their prosperity, oh, match that with the gospel. What do you mean? The prosperity gospel. The prosperity of fools shall destroy them. So any man or woman is not supposed to get up, but any man or woman gets up there and treats, oh, you give God $10, you will give you $10, you give you all kinds of great things, a wonderful thing, your life will be wonderful, great, and if you get sick, it's all your fault because you don't have the faith, and God does not just bless you, but God's just wonderful and great. God says through the scriptures of Solomon, fool. All right, let's run back over here, verse 7. The fear of the Lord is the beginning of knowledge, but fools despise wisdom and instruction. The prosperity is a fool. There's a fool. It's a fool that gets up in a pulpit, goes up wherever you want to call, where he gets up, and everything's going to be great and wonderful and hunky dory. God says he's a fool and he despises wisdom and instruction. 
But what do you do with Paul said, all they that live godly shall suffer persecution? Or everything will be great and wonderful. Right? I wish God gave man Pinocchio noses. So once that man starts lying, the nose will start growing. That would end politics. All right, verse 33. Now here's the other person of the four. We talked about three. Here's here's the fourth one. I think you know there was a fourth one. We learn more about three men that reject the gospel. Now we learn about the man's going to receive the gospel. More that rejected and the few that oh, how does Solomon know that? Three has rejected, one has received. Wayside. Among the rocks. There was another one. I forget. Wait, well, Mark chapter 4. We're not going to read Mark. We're going to look at Mark chapter 4. How does Solomon know that? How do I just know that? The Holy Spirit just showed me that. All right? This is not me. This is not in my notes. Mark chapter 4, verse 4. Wayside. Verse 5. Stony ground. Verse 7, thorns. Verse 8, good ground. How many types of how many types of uh, ground has been planted? Four. What Solomon tells us how many groups of people would have reaction to the preaching of the gospel? Four. And there surely when it comes to Mark chapter four, there's definitely at least at least one man out of that group is truly saved. Two of them, yee. one of them, of a little more, yee. but they don't have the fruits. One says unfruitful. James said that, listen, if they ain't got fruit, we can surely say hey, they ain't got no faith. Oh. I probably just lost my Baptist license somewhere in that state. That's okay, I'm a born again Bible believing Christian. Then back. But whoso, I wish it said whosoever, but I'm not going to change the Bible. And you know where that one goes. But there's also whosoever was not found in the Lamb's Book of Life and cast off in the lake of fire to burn forever. Whoso hearkeneth unto me, wisdom, and the preacher, the teacher that the Holy Spirit is using, shall dwell safely. Now we're in the Old Testament. We're not on the, on the other side of Calvary. Remember I told you, Proverbs is written in the Old Testament under the law and everything. But one day through Jesus Christ and receiving Jesus Christ as my Savior, I'm going to walk safely in the gate of New Jerusalem. But I can spiritually apply it. It shall be quiet from evil. Did I do something wrong? Oh, I, 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 I did a, a non-denominational verse there, didn't I? See, you know, if you trust our God, our Jesus, everything will be great and everything will be wonderful. You'll have no evil, no problems. Shall be quiet from fear of it. Not, you're not going to get every evil. I guarantee, now I'm going to talk American. I'm not bashing. I'm just saying in America today, right now, we've had two tornadoes hit at one time. Uh, still. On the Gulf between Texas and Florida. And I pray for my the saints and my brethren there. I may know of you. And we've had the riots in Portland. And lives have been killed and businesses have been burned and destroyed in Chicago and New York. And, you know, I guarantee with, with that, with those things right there and other things happening, I guarantee amongst the destruction, I guarantee there's a saved individual. And his family. 
They've done nothing. They go to church when they can. I mean, when they can talk about churches being closed. They go to church. They read their Bible. They go out and sow in. They live a clean life. They're respectable by their employer, yet they're not like because he's clean. And I guarantee something was at least something was destroyed. Definitely with a with a hurricanes and tornado. Now, when they're living that kind of life, they love the Lord and everything like that. All right, they're going to have concern. All right, the house is gone. But it's not nationwide on my side. It's God Almighty on my side. Now, they may have packed up their house they, with these hurricanes. They may have boarded up the windows. They may have gone off to a shelter. Good. That's not fear of... Oh, that, that's a fear of evil, but that's smart. <laughs> and you're in that show. God take care of us. And if we die, I'm absent from the body, present with the Lord. So be. But the evil's not going to stop because I'm evil. Stop! I'm a Christian. <laughs> they will be laughing at you. So that's the street preacher. 